Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Jan Erickson from Stepping Aside, and welcome to Somewhat Daily Tarot and Rune for the fourth day of February 2019. Well, four is a day of structure and foundation, which is nice because it's the new moon, and so you can do rituals today uh, where you set your intentions for the coming month, where you set goals. You can practice, you can do healing ritual d during this time. You can do any trance work you want to do. I like to do trance work over the new moon. Um, I like to kind of think about and take stock of, you know, what the last month or, or a few months have been like and, and, you know, how I feel right now and, and where I want to go with all of that, you know, whether I want to let go of stuff that's no longer working for me or, or uh, just sort of practice some allowing about things I can't do anything about. Um, and just trust that whatever should happen is going to happen, you know. Um, sometimes trying to insert yourself into a situation especially if it's with regarding someone who's doing something that you don't like. Well, clearly they're fine with what they're doing. So if you go and you try to tell them, Hey, you know, that's not okay or whatever. Sometimes that works fine. And it, you know, if they're sensitive or they're not so caught up in their own thing, you know, they can, they can see what they're doing and stop, you know, but sometimes it just eggs them on all the more. So, you know, you kind of have to, decide which is going to work for you the best i suppose but sometimes it's just best just to allow things to be as they are allow people to do what they do you know and don't intervene because maybe they're having to learn something about all that you know it might not feel very good to you but you know my mother used to always say this too shall pass and oh god i hated when she did that it's just like oh come on can't you take me seriously for once you know <laughs> but it's always no this too shall pass you know, sometimes, you know, and she was right, sometimes if you just let things be, uh, they work themselves out far quicker than if you insert yourself into the whole thing. So, well, I'm already dropping cards, so. Well, my husband and I just got back from our walk. We haven't walked in a couple of days, and, and so it's always uh, a little bit to get going again, you know. But of course, we chose that we just we said yesterday, we're going to go no matter what. Well, no matter what, it was snowing this morning. But it was in the 30s. So that's not that bad. It was actually kind of warm. Uh, but we did we did the walk and uh, I think it's probably I have to do another map my walk on it because I don't remember it's it's a it's an old route we used to do shorter than what we used to do. You know, we try in the summertime to average about about six miles on the walk. That seems to be the best, you know, about an hour and a half or so to do that. And, and that that seems to be a, a really nice workout. Um, but but lately we've been uh, doing the shorter one. And I want to say it might be close to four miles, but I'm not sure. I, I think it's between three and four, though. I don't think it's it's I don't think it's quite four. But anyway, it's nice to do it, and and uh, uh, I feel better when I walk. I don't uh, I don't like being in the house, and unfortunately, during the winter time, you kind of have to be around here. So uh, there's only so much you can do outside. But in the summer, it's really nice. I grew up for my or part of my childhood. I spent in Alaska. I was born in California, but I. Uh, Spent part of my time in Alaska, and I I've been watching the the temperatures on this polar polar vortex deal that's happening in the country right now. And uh, I remember it. Um, one of the temps was like minus fifty something, and I remember one year uh, in Alaska we were living in Wasilla at the time, and uh, it was after we were there during. In, in 1964, we were there during the 64 earthquake that was 9.2. That was fun. We lived in Wasilla during then. Well, this was actually after that when this happened. But I remember my mother telling me that uh, it was 57 below. And, uh, you know, we didn't go anywhere. You had to plug your car in at night, keep the oil pan warm so you could start it in the morning. But, 
even with that, you know, we couldn't go anywhere because uh, it was just too doggone cold. <laughs> so, and I don't, and I don't think that was with wind chill, but it might have been. But, but she said it was 57 below, and, and I mean, she, we were both California girls, so that was, you know, a real interesting thing to have to get used to. I don't know that it gets that cold up there anymore. Um, but back then it sure did, and, and uh, in the 60s it did. But now, you know, there's just a little bit of a dusting, you know, on the, on the ground right now. And, and I, it's going to be cold for the next uh, week or so, so it might stay, although it's starting to melt on the road. So it was a little slick walking out there. Anyhow, it was nice to go out. In fact, it was, if, in fact, if, truthfully, it was glorious. I just loved it. But then I loved the snow. Just not a whole lot of it. When we had the earthquake, I'll tell you real quick and then we'll, 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 do, the, we'll do the reading. But when the earthquake happened in 1964, we lived right next to Wasilla Lake and, uh, my mother and I, um, my mom was pregnant with my brother at the time. And, uh, uh, you know, she was from California, so she was used to earthquakes, but never had ha been in anything like this. And we watched the uh, uh, ice all over the lake uh, break upwards, just chunks of ice breaking upwards, and geysers of water would go everywhere. And so... <laughs> So then when the water on top of the lake that was already was frozen, when it froze, you could walk on it and it was like walking on a waterbed. It was, it was just really, it was an incredible experience. And it was so odd, you know, because she was pregnant, of course, with her second child during this natural disaster. And, uh, and then I was pregnant with my first child. Uh, we lived in Portland and uh, I was pregnant with him during Mount St. Helens's eruption. So <laughs> You know, two natural disasters that I've been in. Uh, pregnancies involved in both, just not mine on the first one. I was, I, how old was I? I was six. I think it was six during the earthquake in Alaska. So, crazy times, natural disasters and the weather. No fun, no fun at all. Anyhow, let's count 13 and see what we have for today on this new moon day. I think it goes, I think the time of it is one o'clock or one something. I put it in the, in the la latest blog post I did. Uh, I did the lunar transits and uh, so it's in there. But anyway, uh, you can check that out on the blog if you want to look at the, uh, uh, what I've done with my, um, with my chart, my astrological chart that I use, I went ahead and I, I sort of, uh, one that, that I, I use solar fire I also use time passages, but I, I like solar fire because it has the esoteric uh, charts in it and stuff. So, and I like that real well. But what I did was, uh, uh, if you look at it, especially if you if you if you practice witchcraft, you can. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on there, like planetary hours, and I included the planetary hours, even though they were for yesterday. Actually, I did a second one um, that was for today. Uh, so you can look at planetary hours of, if, if you're looking at that when you work magic. Um, there's also the mansions of the moon on there. I include the uh, qualities the or the modes or well qualities, uh, whether it's cardinal, fixed, or mutable, what's, what energies are strongest, elemental energies I, I have on there. Also the rays, the uh, cosmic rays, um, that's real uh, prominent in esoteric astrology as opposed to the more exoteric that we're all used to. Uh, so I have all of that on there as well. Um, just so it's helpful, you know, if you're working magic, you know, we like to align energies to just the right moment, you know, so I, I, I include all that kind of stuff on there as well as the lunar transits, not just aspects and, and chart balances, but I also put magical working information on there as well. So anyhow, check that out. But anyhow, today, today is the two of cups. And here we have a couple. Who are exchanging? I, I mean, they're they're likely they're likely doing a hand fasting or something, or getting married. They're coming together in harmony and balance. You see the caduceus up there. You see healing that that indicates healing. So it can mean healing. It can mean uh, balanced emotions. It can mean balanced polarity.
that can be a, a, a nice focus for any ritual you might want to do today uh, for the new moon. Let's draw another card, though. But, you know, you're talking reciprocity, aren't you, with this? But mostly, you know, when we come together in balance, you know, when we have the ability, I guess, to see self in others, I think that it's a, it's a tremendously healing experience to look upon somebody that you might think you have nothing in common with and know that you're all the creator manifested into form. So, so in that sense, you know, that individual is just another aspect of your own self, isn't it? So someone you might feel that's challenging, that's difficult to be around, or, or maybe it's someone you don't even want to be around. You know, they can oftentimes be our greatest teacher. So... Well, we have the Four of Pentacles. Now, this card can be uh, about, about taking stock of what you have. So again, you know, that could be another theme of any, any ritual today for the new moon. It can also mean something that someone who's miserly. I mean, he's really, you know, it's clearly he's the king. And there's his uh, kingdom behind him. So he's either turned his back on the kingdom and he's more focused on his own issues and his own wealth. Or he's trying to hang on to that for the rest of his kingdom and trying to be more practical. You know, the, the pinnacles is, is, a, is the practical side itself, basically. You know, it's our foundation, it's wealth, it's money, it's, it's, it's you know, all the mundane aspects of life, basically. And so, you know, here... Um, because it's a four, you know, if it's ill-dignified, then it can mean someone who's miserly. But if, but if not, then you, it's somebody that is concerned about the greater aspect of everything, about how do you maintain the, uh, how do you maintain a positive outcome for somebody, how do, or, or for the kingdom, or for the society, or the group, or the tribe? How do you maintain the security of, of all of that? And basically, we do that by being in, in harmony with one another and harmony within. Unity doesn't happen if we see everyone as the other, does it? So, so that's that's an interesting. Normally, I I, I interpret this card, especially of late, uh, as being someone that, uh, uh, in terms of the uh, current occupant of the White House, so who's a little too uh, focused on the self and on on all on what all this position can do for him, and 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 he isn't interested in in what it can do for the rest of us. So. Um, but that's because he doesn't know how to come together in harmony with anyone. He's, he's really just focused on, on apparently whatever his relationship is with dictators in the world. So, and that's not a good thing. So uh, we know better than that, though, don't we? We have Thurzaz, the third rune of the Elder Futhark. So it's catalytic. Mind, body, spirit, and balance. It's also good for weather working. One time, I'll tell you this, we, uh, I, we were going to go somewhere, and uh, we decided not to um, because the weather was so bad that I didn't think that I could get out of the driveway, much less, you know, travel safely anywhere. I drive a Camry, so it's kind of low to the ground, and uh, uh, at the time, we didn't have our snowblower, so we had to just basically dig our way out and we have like an 800 foot driveway. So when it's snowy, you know, that can be a real issue. If, if I, if I can't, if there's too much, I, I have to just sit here un until we clear the driveway and I can't get out to the store or anything like that. And so one time I, I, I just went out there and I'm literally screaming <laughs> thorough as at the clouds. And I just should have, uh, I just should have believed in myself and what I was doing. But I was just I was just so irritated. The forecast was not looking good. And I was just so irritated. And by the time and so we canceled our plans. We canceled we canceled everything, right? Shouldn't have done that because we could have gone and we just we just would have had to have left that morning and not the day before. 
uh, and we could have gotten there and gotten home all in the same day. So I just should have trusted the uh, the power of Thor's hammer and Thor's ass, and I would have been fine. But I didn't because I was being stupid and irritated, and I just I just said, "Oh, forget it. We're just not going to go." And we could have see. So Thura says, in other words, it's great for, for, for breaking up clouds and, and, and dispersing the weather and all of that and, and uh, breaking through obstacles and, and things like that. So perhaps the obstacle that's been between us right these uh, of late is the fact that we can't see each other as simply a brother or a sister. Um, but in terms of the other, we cannot come together in harmony. So maybe what we need to do <clears throat> is is align that, <clears throat> excuse me, I can take a drink here. <clears throat> maybe what we need to do today is uh, focus on the uh, uh, aligning within, maybe take this time to go inward, do a little trance work, a little meditation, and uh, uh, find that alignment within to where you understand that you're part of the greater resonance of source energy or of the creator and that we are all one together uh that we can be harmonious if we only choose to to see us as that and that's really all it is it's how do you see it you can always see it a different way um, so perhaps that's where the strength and our security lies is within this harmony both within and without And we can use the energy of Thurizaz to break through whatever obstacles are in our path toward that sense of unity with one another. So I think for me anyway, that's, you know, it, it, along with, you know, kind of setting the intention for the coming month, um, and kind of taking stock of things, you know, which, you know, the four also means taking stock. But how do I go forward this month in harmony with, with others? How do I break through any obstacles toward that that I, that might come in, my, come, you know, might might uh, be thrown in my way, so to speak? So, uh, and and to be conscious of not creating those obstacles myself uh, between you know me and someone else. So, so that's kind of cool, isn't it? I think so. Anyway, uh, on this snowy day, <laughs> on the high desert, <laughs> well. It's just a wonderful day. I love it when it snows, just as long as it's not too much and it doesn't stay around forever. The, uh, the, 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 the winter a couple years ago was just nutty. I mean, we had literally, we had three feet, we had three months of snow. And I mean, we're talking two and a half, three feet, two and a half to three feet everywhere. And it stayed the entire time. It never melted. It, it was just so odd. That's the first time. I mean, I mean, we've had snow that has stayed around here for a while, but not anything like that. That was just crazy. So anyhow, hopefully we're not going to see that right now. Though. Hopefully this will just be quick and it'll be over and we'll get back to business. So anyhow, because, you know, the everything's starting to the trees are starting to bud and it's very cool. And, and I'm I'm waiting for my 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 poplar buds to get bigger and 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 all those little catkin things. Uh, I can get them off of the cottonwood, too. Uh, but I, I like to tincture those and everything. So uh, it's just a nice, I, I don't know if it's antimicrobial or what the heck it is. But anyway, it's just it's just a nice thing. If you, if you kind of get a little bit of the, you know, get a, a summer cold or something like that, it can just help, you know, your immune system and stuff. So I like to do that. So I'm waiting for that to happen. And and uh, and I love that that my cleavers have never left. I, I still have cleavers growing. So I can go out there and I can get cleavers, fresh cleavers for tea. And sometimes there's uh, even some some uh, chickweed out in some pots on the deck that are that's still growing. Now my chickweed in the ground really isn't. But I noticed uh, the other day that uh, on the weekend that in fact I checked both both the the bed of nettle that I have, and then also I have some planted in a pot. It does not grow naturally around here, and so I actually had to order seeds for it so I could grow nettle, stinging nettle, you know. I'm sure that it, well, it grows like crazy down in the valley. It just doesn't grow here. I think it's just too dry for it, maybe. I, I don't know. But I, I have some planted, and I, I always order more seeds because I put in more pots around so that I always have nettle. Nettle is one of the most healing herbs you can ever use. Uh, it's a liver herb. It's also diuretic. But it it just, I don't know, it, it's great for allergies if you have, you know, 
uh, uh, hay fever, uh, you start uh, 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 you start doing nettle, either as tincture or you can do it in capsules or tea, whatever. I, I do it all. The, I, I don't do it in, in capsules anymore, but I, I make tincture and I make, I always have nettle in my teas. And basically it just flushes your system. It keeps the liver, the liver system working properly so that everything gets moving through your system and it's not getting clogged up and blocked and toxicity building up and all of that, because that's how, that's how illness takes hold. So I like to just take a preventative approach and just keep things flushing all the time. So nettle is one of the things I use to do that. So, and it's growing again, yay. And the self heal is growing like crazy in the greenhouse. So, plus I have it planted other places, but, and it comes up naturally in my pasture, but I just, I just, you know, sometimes I can't find it, you know, and, and uh, so I thought, you know what, I'm just going to buy seeds and I'm going to plant it. And I did. And, Oh my goodness, it's just incredible. So, and that's another thing, you know, it's it's wound healing both in inside and out. So if you have an ulcer or something like that, you can use uh, self heal in your tea to, to help heal all that. So, anyhow, just something to think about. Uh, nothing better than plants to work with. So, anyhow, thanks so much for coming by. I really appreciate it. If it's your first time, click subscribe. I'd love I'd love you to do that. Um, check out my blog if you haven't yet. It's it's over. It's called Stepping Aside. It's over at I'mSteppingAside.com. Um, it's basically a witch blog, and it, it just talks about all kinds of stuff, um, witchcraft and Reiki and herbal stuff and uh, uh, cannabis. It talks about cannabis because I'm a cannabis patient. So if you haven't checked that out, do do go over there and look at that. And uh, oh, there's also one of those Amazon storefronts on there called A Witch in Store. Click on that and it'll take you to that storefront. It's still Amazon, but I get advertising pennies, just pennies. So <laughs> anyhow, if you want to check that out, you can look at that. See, see the stuff I find interesting anyway. So anyhow, um, if you've been back before, thanks so much for coming back. I so appreciate you. Uh, sticking with me on this. Um, it's a lot of fun to uh, look at the cards and the runes and see what it all has to say and the numerology and maybe put a little uh, witchcraft into it as well. So that's kind of what we do here. Um, but in any event, uh, enjoy the new moon. Um, it is my favorite. Now that I'm in my crone years, it's my favorite time of the, of the month. The full moon is fine, but there's nothing like the crone moon. So anyhow. I look at this as my time. So anyhow, um, again, thanks for coming by and we will see you tomorrow. So be good to yourself and be good to one another and blessed be.